Historically, uh, a lot of folks depended on the streams, not just the oceans, but they also harvested from the streams. So the different oopu, the opai, the shrimps, as well as the hihivai, the snails. Um, so what's been real interesting is in this location, the groundwater actually maintains the estuary. By maintaining the estuary, I keep getting recruits, so the animals still keep recruiting to the stream, even though there may no, be no surface flow because of the diversions. Uh, but the recruitment has stayed pretty healthy. So, uh, a lot of our streams have been diverted. Uh, so what we wanted to do was to be able to show the difference between diverted streams as well as uh, different locations in the streams. You have maybe different water temperatures, uh, different amounts of water flowing, or even no water in a uh, stream. Some of the streams are diverted, so some have been channelized. And then uh, other streams, uh, they've been become intermittent. So when they're intermittent, then the lower parts of the streams are dry. A lot of times what I do is I share that the hihivai or any of the animals in the streams, basically the eggs will hatch, then the larvae actually flows out to the ocean. When they flow into the ocean, uh, as they develop, then what happens is um, the hihivai will start to settle and then they'll start migrating upstream. For the hihivai, they would have to crawl upstream. Uh, same with the opai as well as uh, the oopu would start swimming up the stream. And then so for the different animals like the oopu, they have the fused pelvic fins like a suction cup. It allows them to climb up the waterfalls. So the opai with all their legs, they also will climb up waterfalls also. But these are little tiny creatures, yeah? They're yes, they're very tiny. Actually the hihivai, what's interesting is the hihivai, actually you can identify them by the yellow spots. And the hihivai, even as small as one millimeter, uh, you're able to see the yellow spots on the hihivai and then they'll migrate upstream. Uh, the, the, as snails, what they do is they put down a mucus trail and then they'll sort of follow the leader and head upstream in lines. And then so we've already, I think they've already finished migrating and so they've kind of like dispersed. So that's why I turned over the rocks. When you turn them over, then you also see the different size hihivai. As they migrate upstream and they'll be feeding and like most of the animals, uh, they'll start to grow in size as they're also migrating upstream. Well, some of them can get up to the headwaters. So like your opai and your opu alamo are our best climbers in the stream. Uh, so they actually are one of the first fishes, fish and uh, with the opai, they'll actually swim up, up to uh, the headwaters or basically up into the valley. Uh, I've been working with first the oopu, the fishes. Uh, we have five different uh, oopu. Uh, four of them are what we call gobies, so they have this fused pelvic fin, it's like a suction cup. This is what allows them to climb up the waterfall as well as they'll use that suction to kind of hold on to the bottom during fast water and things. Uh, three of the uh, oopu actually are better climbers than the others. Uh, so those three uh, are the ones that we normally see upstream. Uh, there's also an oopu akupa, that's the fifth one. And that that one doesn't have a fused pelvic fin, so it stays below, or it can't get above the first waterfall. So it stays below, but what happens is that one is a carnivore. So as a carnivore, he's feeding on the other fishes that are trying to come up the stream. So it's sort of interesting how nature has created a niche. So that fish actually feeds on the other fishes that are trying to come up the stream. And then there's also the prawns. Um, first, the Tahitian prawns were introduced in the 50s uh, by Fish and Game. Um, and also before, before I was born, um, but uh, uh, there are Tahitian prawns in the stream. In addition to, there's also a native prawn, the Opai Oeha'a, uh, which you can identify from stripes on its claws, uh, but a little bit smaller in terms of a prawn, but it's also a, a good, uh, it's a prawn that you find in the streams. Um, and then also then the Hihivai. The Hihivai are the snails. Um, we have other snail, well, the hihivai are also related to the PPP, which is the black snail uh, that you see on the marine, on the shoreline. And then uh, there's also the hapavai. Uh, that one is a brackish water species. And then your pipivai is also a brackish water species. But the hihivai is the only one that will migrate upstream. And that one will stay in the fresh water and they will migrate upstream. So remember what I was saying about they could be as small as one millimeter. Uh, that they'll grow over two inches and then uh, so it takes about roughly I think two years or so uh, for them to get that big uh, but the hihivai uh, are uh, present and then uh, it also tells us I think 
uh, if the flow is good, the Hihivai will come back to the streams. We, we see them at many of the East Maui streams that we were studying. We found Hihivai recruiting back to the mouth. Um, this is Waiohue stream. Uh, we have an upstream site which uh, we put a temperature logger. So it ta uh, takes the water temperature and then uh, every quarter uh, we swap out the logger and then uh, we download the data to a computer. Um, so the temperature loggers actually do uh, collect the data for us. I think for a lot of our streams, um, I think it ties in with a lot of productivity and the ecosystem. Uh, so it's just more uh, than just a few animals, but uh, sort of the ecosystem, the plants and the animals. Uh, we've been looking at that. We've been looking at uh, also not just the native species, but also introduced species. Um, with the introduction of a lot of different animals, uh, they've impacted our watersheds.